We are now on the fifth day of our novena, and today we celebrate what used to be known as Golden Mass or Misa Aurea, which commemorates the Annunciation, the actual start of the life of Jesus, God became man. Let us pray in this Eucharist that our devotion to Mary may proceed from true faith by which we are led to know the excellence of the Mother of God and are moved to feel your love toward our own mother and to the imitation of their virtues. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, the evangelist Luke says, Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin named Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And we ask, what was Mary so worried about? Why was she greatly troubled by the greeting of the angel Gabriel when he said, you are full of grace and the Lord was with you? Perhaps to understand and appreciate this passage, it might be good for us to consider what tradition and what biblical scholars give as the context of this passage. Mary was a young teenager who lived in a very small and unimportant town called Naz Nazareth, which is located in the hills of Galilee, Tagabundok si Maria. She came from a poor but honorable family. And scripture scholars say that she had been carefully trained in Jewish scriptures and that she knew great portions of the sacred book by heart. She also knew that God had promised to send the Messiah who will rescue God's people from their conquerors and will be their kind king. Some scripture scholars also say that at that time when Gabriel appeared to Mary 
expectations were high that the promised Messiah would soon be born. Kaya, every Jewish girl prayed to be the mother of this Messiah. Mary herself perhaps prayed for this grace because she loved God and wanted to serve Him with all her heart. But she was just a poor girl from an insignificant town, from a humble family with limited resources. She had no great expectations that her life was going to be any different from that of her poor mother or that of the other women in her small, poor town. Kaya siguro ang tanong ni Maria, eh bakit ako? Bakit ako pinili ng Panginoon? Besides, what did one of Christ's would-be disciples says, say? He says, would anything good come from Nazareth? Would God choose Nazareth as a place for the Messiah to be born? And so when the angel Gabriel greeted her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you, she was greatly troubled. Full of grace really means that, that she is being showered with God's special favors, that she is being blessed and gifted with the special grace of being chosen to become the mother of God. As such a great grace, and Mary perhaps felt that she was not worthy of it. But the rest is history, as we say. Gabriel reveals the plan, and Mary agrees, although she does not completely understand the plan. So, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, what does this segment of our Christmas story tell us? First, when the Lord sends us on mission, He gives us the grace to carry it out. We just have to believe that what we have been, that what we have and what it takes to, that what, that we have, what it takes to begin to carry on and to complete our mission. So whenever we are discouraged, remember what happened to Mary. Mary says, how can this be since I have no relations with a man? Impossible yan. Hindi ko kayang gawin ang mission na hinihingi sa akin ng Panginoon. But the angel Gabriel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and shall, you shall conceive a son. So we just have to remember that our mission, that the work that the Lord gives us is His work, not our work. That we are simply sharing in the mission of Christ and because He wants to make sure that it is going to happen, that it is going to be completed, He gives us all the grace so that we can carry out our mission, which in the end is God's work as well. And so whenever we doubt our capabilities and our abilities to carry out the mission that the Lord has given to us, perhaps we are struggling to be a good parent, nurturing a child to perfection, or we are struggling to be a good government official who wants to bring integrity integrity and honesty in, 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 in public service. Or perhaps we are a teacher, we want to contribute to the, the building of our nation by, by, by training good Catholics and good civic leaders. But whenever we are frustrated, we are reminded that our mission is God's mission as well. And therefore, the Lord will provide all the help that we need to accomplish the mission. And we have to remember that the Lord is with us. But more than the mission, I think what is important to the Lord is not what we do for Him, but who we are to Him. That more important, about, more important than mission is how we are related to the one who sends us on mission. We can only bring Christ to the world if we first receive Him. We can only bring His love to the world if we do not first receive His love. 
Therefore, we need to create a space in which the child is to be born. In other words, Jesus, the child to be born, asks for a space, for a place in our lives, for a place in our hearts. He asks for our friendship. He asks to be related to us. As the spiritual writer and Voskamp puts it, and Mary nods to you in the last days of Advent, only one thing is necessary. Be a space for love to come. You simply have to receive love. Let yourself be loved. Your greatest gift is not your gifts, but your surrendered yes to be a space for God. Mary said yes, although she did not completely know what the yes involved. But she loved God so much that she did not have to think about what needs to be done. All that mattered to her is that she loved God and that she wanted to love God, and therefore she said yes. But she gave her yes unconditionally, and she gave her yes unconditionally, and she never withdrew her yes to God. Through a life of trials and tribulations, hindi maging madaling maging ina ng isang manunubos because as you have seen, Christ has suffered so much. And through the life of trials and tribulations, from the time of the Annunciation until the time of the crucifixion of Jesus, she always stood by the side of Jesus. She always said yes to God. To, 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 to the mission of being the mother of God. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we approach the end of our Advent preparations, we are reminded that like Mary, we are all invited to bring Christ to the world. That is our mission. That is the work that Jesus has given us. But we can only do that if we do not first allow Christ to find a place in our world, in our own lives. The one gift that the Christ child asks for us is not to carry out his mission, but first and foremost, to be his friend. To be in love with him, to be in a relationship with him. And he asks for our unconditional yes. Not yes, I will do everything you tell me, but yes, I will always have a space for you in my life, a space for you in my heart. Amen. And for your special novena homework, I would like to share with you again what Anne Voskamp says. And Mary nods to you in the last days of Advent. Only one thing is necessary. Only one thing. Be a space for love to come. You simply have to receive love. Let yourself be loved. Your greatest gift is not your gifts, but your surrendered yes to be a space for God. That this coming Christmas, it is not us who is going to give the gifts. It is us who will receive the gifts. But we can only receive the gifts if we have a space for the gift in our lives. Kaya nga, ang tanong sa atin is, ano ba ang space, mispasya ba ang Panginoon sa ating buhay? So I'd like you to ask yourself, what do I need to surrender to make a space for Christ, to be a womb for Him? that maybe I have to surrender first my, 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 yung sama ng loob ko sa aking pamilya or I have to surrender, for example, my, uh, any grudge I have for any of my friends or I am even asked to surrender too much time that I give to my work. And also, you may also ask yourself, who is the one person you need to make a space for today? Because Christ can come in the form of a person that you have not given much attention to. Someone who has been crowded out of the busyness of your life. For parents, it might be your children. Or for the kids, it might be your parents who has been very devoted to you. Or, or, or some other person important to you. And so I'd like you to spend time asking yourself, what, how do I have space for God, for I have space for God to be born in my life? And if not, 
what space can I give up so that he can be born in it? 